In the late autumn of 1959, a giant and unique traveler set off on an epic 8,500-kilometer adventure that would go down in history as the strangest road trip ever. But the man on the road wasn't an adventurer or a tourist. The courageous adventurer was a 3,050-kilogram piece of ice. Yes, you heard it right. Let's back up for a second. In the summer before the journey, which took place in the fall of 1959, the idea of the journey originated. Throughout the summer, Radio Luxembourg assigned listeners the task of bringing three tons of ice down from the Arctic Circle. Due to the mega-hot conditions at the equator, the station imposed only two main guidelines. Initially, the prohibition on refrigeration posed challenges to planning the trip. According to the second regulation, the challenger would receive 100,000 francs, equivalent to approximately 16,000 US dollars today, for each kilogram of ice that remained upon landing at the equator. If the large block of ice were made today, it would be valued at roughly $48 million at the outset of the journey. Therefore, the challenger was dealing with an extremely expensive block of ice. Of course, Radio Luxembourg didn't expect anyone to accept the challenge. That was a tough task, for sure. They reasoned that nobody could possibly move a block of ice from the Arctic to the equator without it melting, a journey that would take at least a few weeks. One man courageously stepped up to the occasion. Birger Natvik was the CEO of Glasvat, a Norwegian manufacturer of insulating products. He had faith that the glass wool insulation his company produced would do the trick. If he was successful in assembling a team that could complete the challenge, the company and its employees would get a substantial financial reward. Natvik was the center of attention. After learning of Natvik's aspirations, Radio Luxembourg withdrew their offer. They were petrified of how much money they might lose, but Vic persisted. Although he was no longer eligible for financial prizes, he and his company might receive extensive media coverage. The trip could now officially begin. Scheduled to travel from Moai Rana, Norway, to Libreville, Gabon's current capital, the ice and its supporting cast embarked on their journey. The brave adventurers were scheduled to pass through Copenhagen, Hamburg, Brussels, Paris, Algiers, Niger, and more as the frozen block journeyed from the world's coldest location to some of the hottest countries on Earth. Natvik assigned the task of putting together the squad to Sievert Kleven, an expert with the capability to communicate with the public. Natvik handed the job over to Sievert Kleven. Many drivers, a workshop manager, and a film crew of two joined the effort. As media coverage of the trip grew, more and more businesses offered financial support. Shell, who donated fuel, and Scania, who donated the truck, are only two of the eight countries whose sponsors are funding the journey. The task of acquiring the complete three-ton block of ice from Arctic glaciers in one shot was difficult. The team cut away 200-kilogram blocks and airlifted them to the extraction site. They brought the blocks together and froze them to create a solid block of ice weighing 3,050 kilos. An iron container insulated with 10-inch thick wood and glass fiber insulation stored the ice. Even the truck was lying low. On February 22, 1959, a truck carrying 300 kilograms of medicine set off for the Hospital of Humanitarian Alba Schweitzer in Libreville, the capital of Gabon. The European leg of the trip went smoothly because the weather was nice, the roads were fine, and everything was normal in every major city. People from all around the world would congregate to cheer and watch as word of the journey spread. The publicity for the trip increased as it progressed. Both the squad and the journey were rapidly rising to prominence. The police escorted the vehicle delivering the ice through the crowded streets of Paris when the team finally arrived. Even the mayor extended an invitation to the group for dinner. It was time to say goodbye to Europe and join the less welcoming climate of Africa 
once we reached Marseille. The crew would soon be leaving the cool harbor of Marseille for the blistering sands of the Sahara Desert. There is still ice covering the entire truck. They loaded the cargo onto a boat and transported it across the ocean. They had landed in Africa with their icy load. This leg of the trip through Africa was quite perilous. The ice could melt in the hot sun, but the truck drivers could potentially perish from the heat. There were guerrilla forces hidden in the mountains of the super sandy Sahara in numerous areas. These soldiers posed a serious danger. The crew transported 300 pounds of potentially stolen medicine. In certain parts of the desert, the crew faces the risk of capture or even death for the sake of publicity. Nearby, French Foreign Legion troops followed the crew. The French Foreign Legion ordered the crew to avoid stopping as much as possible to save lives on the road. Despite the crew's best efforts, what had begun as a humorous marketing ploy quickly turned into a life-or-death struggle. In several parts of the Sahara, the team had no choice but to drive in the sand because there were no roadways. The heavy vehicle frequently became stuck in the sand. The ice-carrying crew would have to spend hours in 50-degree heat digging at the sand to release the truck and its precious cargo every time this happened. The mission was extremely risky. The ice was beginning to thaw in some places, which might spell disaster for the expedition. The crew's prolonged stranding in the sand may result in the complete melting of the ice. The Tuareg, a nomadic people who traveled by camel, came into contact with the crew during this leg of the trip. The team opened the ice container and gave the nomads camels some water. Camel owners, in luck, were able to give their animals access to the most costly water in the world, which had made its way thousands of miles from its original source in a Norwegian glacier. The party continued through the desert, sleeping in sleeping bags on the Saharan sands and eventually overcoming the obstacles they encountered. To their credit, they did manage to make it out of the hostile sands and closer to their destination in Gabum. Finally, 27 days after setting out, the crew miraculously made it to their objective. As a result, Libreville had frozen over. No one was in danger. The voyage that had seemed insurmountable to them was now over, but how much fear remained in Ice's heart? The weight of the block revealed miraculous outcomes. The block weighed 3,050 kilograms when it left Norway. Now, 27 days later, on the scorching equator, it tips the scales at a whopping 2,714 kilograms. The ice supply had dropped to only 336 kilos, a mere 11% of the ice had melted along the route. Despite Radio Luxembourg initially challenging the journey and cancelling the associated money incentive, it was still successful. If the cash award was still in effect today, the ice would have a value of almost $43 million. This would make it the most expensive piece of frozen water in the world. Instead of making a tidy profit from the ice, the business put it to an even more valuable purpose. The crew broke up and distributed most of it to the people of Gabon, who had never seen ice before. After landing in Libreville, the crew received an invitation to have supper with French President Charles de Gaulle in Paris. However, this is conditional on their driving back to the French capital. The weary crew declined and instead returned home by plane. At the Norwegian premiere of the expedition's documentary, they flew the ice back to the country and used it to make cocktails for the press. Glasvat, now known as Glava, is still in business 64 years after the incredible expedition began, producing glass wool for insulation from a factory in the town of Askim, located roughly 1,000 kilometers away from Moirana, the starting point of the epic trip. They have over 500 workers under their employment. Thank you for watching this video.